Ladies and gentlemen, just a brief update tonight to make sure that we really appreciate the full gravity of the shutdown, the wholesale demise of modern agriculture that is happening right before our very eyes right now. I want to talk about the meat packers and the fact that uh, onions are rotting by the millions in fields right now. And then finally, the fact that you know dairies, not only are they dumping their milk, as I covered in my previous report, but there are actually co-ops that are financially incentivizing farmers to quit dairy farming. They want you out of the game. They want to shut down producers. This is where we are now. And I want to make this abundantly clear. I'm Christian, and this is the Ice Age Farmer channel. And I want to start off with a video that was posted today by Shea Myers. Hey guys, so what you're looking at behind me are the ramifications of COVID-19. Um millions upon millions upon millions of pounds uh and this is one pile of many throughout this valley that has um you know more than a million pounds in it um we can't donate it a lot of people ask me well why don't you donate why don't you go to uh the food banks well the food banks are mostly full number one number two even if they weren't full they don't need more onions this isn't about um not having enough food for you in the grocery store this is about not having enough um, food for you in the restaurant. When you're not eating there, you don't need it there. Um, the way I've been describing it to a lot of people that aren't as accustomed to the normal supply chain is that uh, imagine a freeway that's connecting the farm to the city, okay? And that freeway has this massive bridge that goes over a massive river, and that bridge gets knocked out. If that bridge is knocked out, you can't rebuild immediately. Now, are there other routes to get there? Yeah, but it takes longer. And if it takes longer, that means the normal product that's in that supply chain cannot make it. And that's what we're seeing today. Normal shipments in the United States, loads of onions. Normal U.S. consumption is 350 loads a day. Um, we saw sub 200 shipments, 200 loads per day, every single day last week. And the most recent number that I've seen is 127. One third of the normal U.S. consumption of onions is being shipped. That's the shift in the supply chain. That's why you're seeing milk being dumped, tomatoes being dumped, squash in Florida being dumped, flowers being ruined and, and wasted. Um, everything has this normal supply chain, this normal route, this normal freeway, and those bridges are out. And these, this, that is a ramification. And so again, Shea puts it quite well as one of the largest onion growers in the nation that the the bridge is out. There's no way to get products to market. This is the same thing we've heard from the beef uh, from from ranchers and it's the same thing we're hearing from dairy farmers who've been asked to step down their production and to dump milk in many cases. I did talk about this in a previous video, but what I wanted to highlight today was this particular uh, dairy co-op Ellsworth in Wisconsin sent out a letter indicating like many others that because of the drop in value in milk and the fact that restaurants and schools cafeterias you know aren't purchasing um, all of those things are true a lot of people have just been dismissing this as a temporary dislocation uh, a bad allocation you know but it's it's more than that and this letter proves that uh, we, we read down here that the board of directors has approved a program to encourage members to quit dairy farming by paying out the equity in the program. They must sell off their cows to someone outside of the co-op by April 15th. In other words, you have one week to exit this interest, to, to stop being a producer, to retire and get rid of your cows altogether. The urgency of that recommendation and the gravity of the situation is just appalling. And everyone is caught up in this whirlwind of fear and uh, and and the pandemic is all that anyone is, is talking about in the media. And you see people are whipped into a frenzy. And so in that state, they're more likely to make poor or even irrational decisions. And to see the dairy industry shutting down like this, literally selling off their herds uh, within a week, how quickly can can they gut the food supply of a nation? Well, we're watching it in real time, and the answer is pretty damn fast in this modern era. Um, of course, they have ready for us cockroach milk and other dairy alternatives. We saw Starbucks blaming dairy as their carbon footprint uh, 
scapegoat. It's been an all-out war on dairy farmers already to date, but now this has really escalated to literally paying them to stop producing. That's just where we are now. Now, the same situation is true, as I said, across three different vectors tonight. The onions, where they can't get to market, the dairy, where they're incentivizing people to quit, and then here with the meat processors shutting down. Uh, ranchers have no place to take their beef or their pork in many cases to get it slaughtered. And um, we can read down here, mo um, zoom in, most processors I work with have seen a significant increase in worker absenteeism, so they're not able to run their production lines as quickly as possible. Their boning lines, everything is shut down, slowed down minimally. Whether that's due to the actual virus, you know, the actual sickness, or child care issues because the schools are shut down, which I just want to point out that would be a side effect of the government totalitarian response, or even fear of contracting the disease, which I just want to point out would be a side effect of the media overhyping this disease completely is unclear. In other words, most of what's going on now has nothing to do with people that are sick. It's because of these ridiculous shutdowns imposed by the government and the media hype that's actually causing these food shortages to materialize. That's what's making the situation go critical right now. In some cases, the decline in available workers is severe. And that caused Carrie on, on Twitter here to comment, why can't we take care of this? Can't we declare a national disaster and make sure that we're able to process this? Because otherwise there are a, a number of problems from the fact that we're putting ranchers and farmers out of business to the, as one euphemism put it, uh, significant animal welfare problems that are caused when you have a backup of animals that can't go to slaughter. And so they, they, you don't, maybe not have food for them, you may not have space for them. This is causing problems. It's a log jam throughout the production supply chain. Um, and, th and then she goes on to say, don't you realize we're in a position right now where we're going to have to start dumping beef, just like you see people dumping milk right now, if we let this monopoly continue. And, um, and that's not rhetoric, ladies and gentlemen. We saw that this was actually the case in New Zealand as well, where butchers were left off of the critical infrastructure list. They were not designated as essential, which is just ridiculous. And so as a result, they had stocked up on millions of dollars of meat and were forced to throw it away in many cases, which is just a sad use of resources. Um, now look at this release from Tyson, which is, of course, one of the largest meat production companies in the world, certainly in the United States. And uh, their update here today says they've added precautions like taking the temperature of workers at our locations before they enter our facilities. And while that's being done with a thermometer right now, we're even adding infrared temperature scanners throughout the factory. So we can just immediately tell if someone gets a fever and send them home. Well, this is actually, I just have to point out, this is a lot like what Kudlow was saying would be true for everyone in the United States today. In this rather scary article, U.S. economy will reopen, but there are going to be big changes. Larry Kudlow uh, goes on, economic advisor to Trump, goes on to say, even after we return to work and school, we're probably going to have big changes. You're going to have to stay home if you have any signs of sickness, notably a temperature, and then we're going to face widespread and ongoing testing, and you will submit to routine temperature taking. Although it sounds like they'll just have infrared scanners, like the drones in China, and, uh, and like the Tyson production facility. But I digress from the food production, and if I tried to cover every aspect of the totalitarian overreach, well, this video would go on far too long. So back to Tyson. Do they actually care that their business is slowing down and gradually shutting down the actual meat production? No, they do not, because for years, in fact, this begins back in 2016, they've been making strategic and significant Capital investments in fake meat, in lab-grown meat, in plant-based products. As I said, this is 2016. Tyson is making investments in the fake meat space. This is 2018. They continued to make those investments and then spin up internal plant-based lines. I've talked a lot about this before. And then even just uh, last year, they introduced a new half-beef, 
half pea burger as if they knew somehow that they would need to shore up this declining supply of beef with something so that they could keep burgers going into grocery shelves. In fact, they've been way ahead of this whole situation, haven't they? Somehow they knew this because it was planned. This was an agenda. This is a pandemic. It aligns completely with the UN IPCC's recommendations for land use and food production. And, um, you know, it doesn't stop at Tyson. Obviously, I'm really glad to see that Bill Gates is finally getting some scrutiny in these last few days uh, that he very well deserves with Fauci up there dancing around, holding the country hostage. It's just a disgusting situation. And it seems completely transparent. So I'm glad that finally Gates is getting some attention properly. But we need to step back and remind ourselves that Gates is equally involved with agriculture as the health situation. So (laughs) the guy is literally funding 11% of the World Health Organization's budget, and he's making equally large investments in agriculture to take over everything. Here's a piece this year called Toxic Agriculture and the Gates Foundation, talking about how the $46 billion Gates Foundation has been going around buying up Every seed company that they can find, in fact, I'll just read from the article, the Gates Foundation has rapidly become the most influential actor in the world of global health, we knew that, he's basically running the World Health Organization now, and in agricultural policies. Yes, he's there too. Remember, the food chain reaction game was the other simulation, like Event 201, that talked about food shortages that would result from an outbreak like this. And here we are now seeing it materialize. The foundation, um, the Gates Foundation, is working with agri-commodity Cargill to develop the soya value chain in Southern Africa. And what that means is they'll be bringing um, GMO crops in there. The Gates Founded Project will likely enable Cargill to capture a hitherto untapped African soya market and eventually introduce genetically modified uh, soybeans down there as well finally they will take over all food production as has long been their goal for hundreds of years more than 80 percent of africa's seed supply comes from millions of small-scale farmers recycling and exchanging seed it's for that reason that he started ag one a new effort to take over all agriculture and use genomic mapping and ai to actually scan the solution space of of seed genes and come up with varieties that they own that they they take the best aspects from any seed in the world and then they patent it but uh you know it's it's here's the part bill gates and others have opened the door for multinational companies to come in including the acquisition of every mentionable sizable seed enterprise on the african continent they are buying it all up hoovering up everything so that just as Tyson did, right? Tyson bought up all meat production, and now they're replacing it with fake meat. And that's exactly what's happening here. They're buying up all the seed production, and they're doing their genomic mapping, and they will replace real heirloom genetics with their transhumanist seeds. It's a crazy situation, but this is what's playing out right now. Uh, Gates Foundation, yes, is a heavy pusher of both agrochemicals and patented seeds. So this is just a continuation of the Rockefeller weaponized USDA again for hundreds of years this has been the it's been a part of the war department part of the policy that was pushing toxic agricultural practices out to the rest of the world from the US I wanted to also point out this um, gated development essay on whether the Gates Foundation is a force of evil or not and um I don't think we need to really talk about that here. It's pretty clear that they're doing terrible things to the world food supply and the world's health situation. So folks, I'll leave it there because I really just wanted to highlight the fact that um, that it's that it's both crops and then the meat production, beef and pork and poultry all. And then again, that the dairy is not just dumping their milk. This is not a temporary supply chain interruption They are incentivizing people to shut down. This is a wholesale demolition, a controlled demolition of our food supply. And I hope you're taking steps today and every day to be able to produce your own food and grow a community around you that is doing the same thing and working together. Please pass on this warning. I I would love for this not to be true. I 
every day I look for signs. Am I, am I, I mean, are we reading too much into this? Is it, but it just gets worse and worse. And now we see they are buying out dairy farmers, trying to get them to stop producing for good. This is like when the port of LA suffered a 40% volume decrease on their containers. And that was a temporary interruption. But at the same time, they announced that they laid off half of the dock workers, which was a permanent situation. So while we can stay, you know, let's hope for the best. Let's hope these things pass. But let's prepare for the worst because we certainly see the moves that are being made are for good. They are shutting this, this whole system down. Thanks for watching, folks. Let's go build great things.